So boys, 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 welcome back. Everybody, welcome to today's episode. It's going to be a good one. Previously, we're going to be playing Atalanta. I may have played on through the season a little bit. I don't know what I was doing with my hand. Just, just go with it. <laughs> we are going to be playing Atalanta, but it's a little further in this season. I wanted to get a few more games in. Also, a bunch of people has been asking me, what is this? This, if you don't know, is a giant axe. <laughs> Joking aside, this, if you've ever played any of the God of War games, Kratos, this is his weapon. The Leviathan Axe God of War is one of my favorite games. This is the axe from, I'm trying, my camera's flipped around, so this is really difficult. Gotta put it in. It's, it's fucking massive. Thing is absolutely massive. So it's all engraved. It's proper metal. Yeah. Proper metal. All wood. It's all engraved. The handle's kind of sick. A bunch of people were asking me in the comments, what's in the background? So now you know. But boys, like I said, we are going to be playing Atalanta. I just wanted to get a wee bit further in the season. My main thing is, I'm trying to test this tactic. I'm trying to get as many games in as possible. Probably we have a lot of games to play still through the season. So like I said, you were here for the Brighton game. And then I didn't want to go like two or three games and then play Atalanta again. So I waited a little bit. We played on a little further, as you can see. We're not too far down. Like we're only halfway through November. So then we jumped back, like I said, back into the league. We won 4-2. Trincao got himself a hat trick and Makoko got one. I had to rest Gao Karras for a couple of games. He was a little tired. Then we jumped into the cup. One thing I have noticed in the cup, I didn't know this. You have to play two players that are under 21 Portuguese players. Don't know what that's about, but it's only in the cup. It's not in the league. So if, when we play in the cup, I have to keep two under 21 Portugal players in the first the starting 11. Not even in the squad. They have to be on the field, which is a little strange. <laughs> because if we don't have any players, I'm going to have to play people from the youth team. But we're lucky enough, we still have a pretty big squad and we still have a lot of the Portuguese players in there. So everything's good, boys. So that led us to the third round of the cup. As you can see, we ended up winning 6-0. Gao Karras got two, Diamande got one, Anasio got one from corners. Shocker. And then a Marcus Edwards came on and then he scored twice. And then we played Atalanta in the Europa League. Previously, we beat them 4-2, as you can see by the scoreline. <laughs> Trincao got two, Pedro got one, and Gao Karras got one. This was a really good one. Like I said, I wanted to get a bunch of games under my belt. A bunch of people have been asking me, am I going to make a video on this tactic? I'll probably not make a video, but I'll probably link it in the description, and then you can download the tactic yourself, because we do know how to do that now. The same with all the saves. I'm going to start putting all the saves up there, so if anybody wants any of the saves, all they have to do is just download it themselves. So then after that, we moved back into the league. We won 2-0. Pedro got one. Makoko got one. Makoko has been top-notch. I would love to bring him in. I would... But like he has a 76 million pound buy clause and we just we just don't have that type of paper bro this isn't this ain't the saudi league then we jump back in to the cup the league cup third phase group d i have never seen a cup that has group phases before <laughs> never ever seen it before like i said if you've played in the portuguese league this all probably makes sense to you but for me it, it's just absolute chaos but anyway we won 5-2 marcus edwards got himself a hat trick ivan fresnita got one and polinio got one i basically rested makoko he needed a wee bit of a break and we we're playing on the cup and i also rested gao Karras. then we jumped back into the league we won 4-0 gao Karras got two on his first match back makoko also got two so the boys up top are doing the job exactly what i need them to do just bangles and look i know a lot of these games it's not against like top tier opposition but like knowing we've beat brighton we've beat atalanta we're doing very very well but the big test is going to be coming up in the next couple of episodes because today once again, we're playing Atalanta, which is going to be absolutely fantastic. Then, probably in tomorrow's episode, we're going to be playing Benfica because the league whew, is very, very close. Like, it's just, it's neck and neck with us. We've both played 10 games. We've both won 10 games. We haven't drew one. We haven't lost one. They're on goal difference of 28. We're on a goal difference of 27. Points 30. Points 30. So, it is like down to the neck. Probably Benfica have a fantastic team. So, when we play them, that's going to be the one that decides. Those two games we play Benfica are probably going to be decide what goes on with the league. But then if you jump over to the goals, Big Gao Karras is still in there. How many goals has he got like in games? 13 games, 16 goals. He got himself one assist and a 7.79 for the season. Like I said, I also put a, a poll up on the community page if you want to try and guess how many goals Gao Karras is going to score in his first season. I'm going to go with, I would say 30 to 35. 
I would say in a round hour, anywhere from 30 to 35, I think is a very, very good season. But then average ratings, Trincao and Gao Keres are both in there. Pedro is still in there for assists. And then we have Trincao and Gao Keres in there for player of the matches. The thing that usually happens with my saves down here is we usually have someone in for the yellow cards. We usually have at least both of our fullbacks are in there for yellow cards. But the minute we don't seem to be getting a lot of people booked and sent off, which is great. The tactic has completely said the same. Nothing has changed. Also, um, the Bast and you see the team that we got him from are very, very upset. Apparently, in his loan deal, I said he was going to be playing as a ball playing defender, which he was going to be playing. Then I kind of switched uh, the tactic, but I don't want to take the central defender on cover because then it ruins this diamond thing that we've got going on. So I don't know if they keep getting upset. We may end up losing to Bast in January because he may end up going back to his team. Look, I don't want to fuck with the tactic. The tactic has to be the thing that's important. If he leaves, we'll bring somebody else in and then I'll just play Charisma as the central defender on cover. Look, I'm not going to basically just change the whole formation and fuck up the team a little bit for one player. That's not going to happen. The team has to come first. So on top of that, we said in the previous episode, we are going to have to replace our keeper at some point. Like I said, I would love to bring Dennis Seaman in. If we can get him in super, super cheap, like I might even try and loan him in. But then the only thing is if I loan him in, I'm going to have to start him, which is going to be a bit of a problem. So if I could get him in, look, if we can get anywhere, I would say four and a half, five million, I think is an absolute steal. But once again, this is all heavily dependent on how much money we get at the end of the season but also heavily dependent on how well we do. No, I mean, if like, we were to win the league, do well in the Europa League, we could get a wee bit more cash. But like I said, I don't know how rich the team is. So like, I, we could do all this. We could win the league, do well in the cup, do well in the Europa League, and then we could get 8 million. <laughs> no, I mean, and that's not a lot of money. But Seaman is probably more likely going to be my first choice as a keeper, as a replacement. Look, he's 17. We can keep him for the whole save. It's kind of what Sporting does. Buys really, really good young players. Super cheap. Gives them a lot of football. But then another one is also Justin Beaslow, a wee bit more expensive, 20 to 30 million. Once again, heavily dependent on also how much money we get. But the only thing is, he is a wee bit injury prone in my save. So this is one that I may look to maybe not do just because of the injury prone thing. He's one footed. He's also injury prone. And we're going to have to pay 20 to 30 million, which is a lot more money than Seaman. He is a lot of better keeper, but he's also what five. He's also eight years older than Seaman. Another option could be young Nicholas Hadell also goes super, super cheap anywhere from 13 to 16 and a half million. Another thing, fantastic mentality, super consistent, can play reasonably well, both feet, really, really good determination, reflexes is good, distribution is good because what's what we want. We want a keeper that is very, very comfortable from playing out from the back. But that is all worries for another day because one, we don't know if we've got money next season. <laughs> And also, a Dan I'm kind of happy with. I'll keep a Dan for as long as I can until we either have the money or he decides to retire. Because like I said, at the end of the day, he is also 36 years old. So it's probably not going to be long before he decides to call it a day. But like I said, it's a problem for another day. Let's go play Atalanta. The only person that is not fit today is going to be Fresnita. But I do want to kind of play him. Look, even if I have to bring him off at half time and then bring a Koba on, that is perfectly fine. I do want to start him though and try and get him a wee bit more fitness because like I said, he was out for a while. He was injured for a couple of weeks so I want to get him a wee bit of football. But once again, also a very, very good test for us. Look, I know we've played Atlanta before. We played very, very well, but we also know they're very, very dangerous. I'm not taking any chances. Like I know they're a good team. They score goals. They are known for scoring goals. They've got a lot of talent. But like we're very, very capable of stopping teams. And like I said, What a fucking goal from Ardashio. This is why this kid is going to be end up being captain. And like, Ardashio does this all the time. He really does. See the saves that I've had Ardashio in my team? He does this quite a lot. I think him and Diamande playing as liberos just gives him that license to push up the park. Be very, very dangerous. Look, sometimes will it get us caught out sometimes for like a wee goal here and there? Yeah, probably. But that's just going to be things that we just test over time. I was hoping that was going to be another goal straight away. But this, I'm very, very happy with this formation. And Anashio, like I said, down the line, will definitely end up being our captain. Because there is a couple of things. As you can see, he has 12 leadership. But I've also sent him on a leadership course, which means this is going to get a little higher. Oh, God, who wants him? Castle. I would say we could fight off Newcastle. But, like, New Newcastle actually want a few of our defenders. No, it wasn't a defender. It was also Pedro. Newcastle are also interested in Pedro. Look... Pedro, I get, I get deal with losing. There's a lot of really, really good players I could bring in, but Anasio's just like one of those ones you don't want to lose. And I will fight tooth and nail to keep him as long as we can. Like I said, one, 
Newcastle, big team in England, can offer them a lot of money, so like it is going to be difficult to fight them. Also, the main thing we need to do next year as well, I know I'm talking about next year and this season's only just started, we need to get this fucking squad down. Like, we really, really do. This squad is absolutely massive. There are so much wages being wasted. In January, I'm going to start selling a lot of the dead. We're probably the people that are out on loan. Can't do fuck all about them. I have to wait till they come back next season and then we'll get rid of them. There is a couple of people in there that I'm very, very interested in keeping. There's a couple of good young players that I'm going to keep a wee eye on. I was hoping that was her second. I've also been making the videos a little bit shorter because I want to start putting... The glasses wouldn't go back on there. <laughs> I want to start putting out videos every day, like shorter, better edited videos. So like there's something for you to watch like every day. I think he was on side. I think he was on side because people were asking like why well, I've cut the videos down for like 25, 30 minutes. But those videos are good. But like I also I like the wee like short and sweet videos too. And I think this way I can get videos out every day. I can learn to edit a lot better and I can just make the video quality a lot better. What a ball from Dan Monday. And then Makoko, like I said, I would love to have Makoko here unless we get a, a takeover the only way we're ever going to be able to buy Makoku they're actually starting to get a decent amount of the ball it's funny watching Atalanta play because it wasn't that long ago I was playing as Atalanta in my save and then sometimes you forget you're like oh I'm not in control of Atalanta like I was looking at Rugari Rugari's one of those weird ones I know I shouldn't be talking about players when we're playing against them it's a terrible idea don't ever do it because <laughs> then they end up playing but Rugari's one of those ones he's basically Atalanta's left back he does, his stats aren't phenomenal, but he just plays really, really well. Like, that dude was getting crazy amounts of assists for me. It was unreal. Like, I, I wanted to keep him. Everybody was after him. Real Madrid was chasing him. Fucking um, AC Milan wanted him. Man United wanted him. And, like, I was having a lot of problems holding on to Rugeri in that save. But this is all I want from us. I just want us to get the ball down, have good possession, and then make, like, good choices when we get in and around the box. Probably, I mean, it's not going to happen every time. I've noticed this as well. I need to find a better corner routine. We score, de we score okay amounts of goals from corners, but it's something I need us to start doing a little bit better is start scoring. A we have the Bast in there, who's a big boy. Diamond is huge. Anasio's pretty big. I mean, like we have, and then Gao Karras. Gao Karras isn't amazing in the air, but like he's a big, like physical dude. So like, I want to start trying to score a few more goals from corners. I need to find a better corner routine. I know it's one of those things I don't really overly need to worry about because we're playing pretty well, but like it's one of those ones, if we could score like a, like, Say you score, you score 10 goals from corners over the space of a season. Like, that could take a couple of draws, like a couple of victories, you know what I mean? And just get you a few points, maybe get you through into the next leg of a cup. Like, those wee small micro changes can win you games. This is a goal, boys. I can feel it. I'm not going to lie. When he hit that, I was thinking that went in. This is what I'm talking about, boys. I'm not going to lie. This season has been going pretty well. The games that I've been recording, usually we play fantastic when I'm playing offline. And then when I record, that's when we start falling apart. We've just been doing really, really well all round. I've probably just got himself now. I shouldn't have said that. It's also got to like the 59th minute. I'm also going to bring Fresnid off because like I said, he was very, very uh, tired at the start to begin with. Got Anashio. Debas is pretty solid. The bass is on a 6.7, but he just hasn't really had a lot to do. Pedro's not playing great. I'm going to bring Marcus Edwards on again. This is one thing I do like. Marcus Edwards is a good player, but the inconsistencies is the main thing why I'm not going to start him. So that if I can do this, bring him on, he can maybe set up a goal or just like be an absolute nuisance. I'm also going to maybe bring... Oh, God. Yeah, bring Anashio off. I want to protect him. Anashio's just back from being injured. This is only like a second game, so like I don't want to push him too hard. I'm going to end up getting him fucking injured again. We're 3-0 up. We should be okay. We were doing so well and they just hit us on a wee random counter. And of course it's Charles de Ketelier. If you did watch the Atalanta save, Charles de Ketelier is absolutely fantastic. He's also massive. He's like 6 foot 5. Who was he just... Charisma was like... Crouch jumping? I want us to try and get another goal here. I know like 4-1, but like just they're getting like wee patches in the game where they're starting to get back into it. And I don't want that. I want us to... Monday, do we need to work on your shooting? So I'm also going to make an R change. I'm going to bring Reese on for Nets. Nets is booked. He's also not playing great. He keeps giving the ball away loads. So I'm going to bring him off. I'm also going to bring Morata on too because um his demand is absolutely shattered. And I don't want him getting sent off because he's tired of making silly tackles. 
Did we just get a wee penalty? Oh, when that came in, I thought, Gao Karius, little header. That's one thing, like I said, that's not... Gao Karius is a big boy. 13 heading, or 13 jumping, 12 heading. He's not phenomenal in the air. He's a lot... He's more nippy, which is weird because he's six foot two, and usually players his size aren't meant to be nippy. But like he's he's more nimble than he is like a big like header of the ball, which is the only thing which is a little strange. We don't have anybody up top that can head the ball, but like it seems to be working out all right. We're four one up against Atlanta. The boys a little four one, so we beat them four two in the first match, and we beat them four one in this one. That's absolutely fantastic. Look, this is a very very good result for us. That's about as comprehensive as get. We should also still be staying top of our league table. Yeah, like we're we're six points ahead of anybody. This is what I want. And then we have to play um, Servette next. So hopefully if we can get a wee win against Servette, start getting some points. I want to get out of this group stage as fast as possible and with as much points. I think we're doing very, very well. Considering I would say we have the hardest group. Like us, Atlanta and Brighton, bro, that's a hard group to get out of. But everybody, I think it's going to be a fantastic spot to stop off for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Remember like, comment, subscribe. Only if you fucking want to on YouTube. We're doing well, boys. Obviously, that was a fantastic day, though.